They are pictures that would make today's paparazzi jealous. My father, he always carried a camera. Some of baseball's biggest names of the past, up close and personal. Practicing, chatting, hanging out. The first camera I remember he had was called an Argus C3. It was a 35 millimeter camera. And he always took pictures of everything. You'd expect to see Roberto Clemente or Bill Mazeroski among the snapshots, but how about Hannes Wagner, Pi Trainer, even Cy Young in his later years? And that's only the beginning. How many pictures do you have from that your father took over the years? I probably have uh, uh, over 100,000. 100,000? Yeah, that, this includes slides. He, he went into slides for a while, boxes. I have boxes of slides, file cases. Joseph Sorelli is now the keeper of those more than 100,000 pieces of history. Every one of them was taken by his late father, Charlie. Charlie grew up in Panther Hollow, about a block away from Forbes Field. He loved sports almost as much as he loved his family. Baseball was his favorite because it was a long season. He liked the warm weather. At the dinner table, we would always talk about sports, and he would question us and quiz us on things like baseball nicknames, and like Babe Ruth, his name was George, okay, and uh, you know, Pee Wee Reese, his name was Harold. Duke Snyder's name was Edwin, and he would test us on these things. So we became, well, all of us became well-versed in sports. All as Charlie got to know most of his subjects firsthand. Charlie was first a fan, then an usher and member of the grounds crew at Forbes Field. Eventually, he began to work in the visiting clubhouse. Joe was the visiting bat boy for two years and would often help his father in the locker room. A lot of work was after the game. Uh, we would do the laundry, we would brush all the dirt off the bottom of the spikes, and then we would have big cans of saddle soap and a brush about three inches round and we would uh, lather the shoes up to clean them up. It was hard work, but Charlie didn't mind. Every player and every team that came to town meant new friendships. He was on a first name basis with everybody. He was a very likable guy. He was a conversationalist. He liked to talk to them about the cities, their travel, their family life. He uh, gravitated more toward uh, the coaches and managers who were more of his age that he knew when they were baseball players. Uh, there was a there was one uh, catch. Uh, there's one coach for Philadelphia. His name was Benny Bengo. He was a catcher for the Yankees during the Babe Ruth era in the 20s. And my dad and Benny were very good friends. And then Latin players start coming in. My father spoke Italian, and Italian was very similar to Spanish. A lot of words. So he would kid around and converse. And every picture he took was carefully documented. He labeled everything, he dated, he dated almost everything. He, you know, he maintained his own uh, photo albums. And the list of who's who inside the albums is endless. Joe DiMaggio, Stan Musial, Kari Yastrzemski, Doc Ellis. Here's a young broadcaster, Bob Prince, dressed in a pirate's uniform. Name anyone associated with baseball and you'll find him, along with much more. The Steelers at one time played in Forbes Field, of course. Charlie worked for them, too, taking care of the visiting teams with his camera in tow. Check out the Chief in his younger years and this fresh-faced Andy Russell. Not to mention hockey, wrestling, track, horse racing, speedboat racing, and bowling. Name a sport, and Charlie photographed it. And he not only captured history, he was a part of it. Charlie Sorelli, a huge Pirates fan, was of course working the Yankees clubhouse during the 1960 World Series. He savored that World Series. He just loved it when Mazeroski hit his home run. One thing you learn when you're in that situation, you never showed any emotion. You know, if, the, if you were sitting in the dugouts and the Pirates were at bat and somebody hit a grand slam home run, you just sat there and moped like the rest of the guys. So <laughs> he, that's the way he was. You know, he, he didn't cheer for them or anything like that. But inside, he inside, was Inside, oh yeah, he died for it. When the Yankees were leaving town after the game seven that they lost, my father and, and knew Casey Stengel very well. And of course, the ball players would tip the people in the clubhouse. 
and Casey Stengel wrote my father a check. Now, my father told me this story, but I don't remember what the amount was. And my dad was torn about whether to cash the check or not. He was going to keep it as a souvenir. I think he eventually cashed it. <laughs> but then I think afterwards he had, uh, he had second thoughts. Hillary and Bradsby, who made... But Louis Charlie Slugger, already had plenty of other souvenirs. Bill Mazeroski, right here. Yeah. And uh, right above him, Sandy Koufax, who pitched a few uh, no-hitters for the Dodgers. Including several autographed bats, like this one from the 1962 All-Star Game. There's these uh, autographed balls. Uh, and then there's the boxes and boxes of autographed baseballs, dating back to when he was a kid. Here's something you don't see every day, a ball signed by the 1925 Pittsburgh Pirates who beat the Washington Senators in the World Series. You can see they signed the balls different in those days. Yeah, here's the manager of the 1925 Pirates, Fred Clark. From Clark to Clemente and Martha, with 1960 World Series balls signed by the Pirates and Yankees, the memorabilia is endless. But Charlie also took pride in another job, family and neighborhood historian. My father did most, took pictures of all the families, the communions, the confirmations, the weddings, parties, but he took pictures of everybody. Well, almost everybody. We have very few pictures of it. My mother and father and brother, sister and I, we never had a, like an official family photograph, a family portrait. Because he was taking them of everyone else. That's right, else. And, and he never, we just never had a photograph taken of our family, which I always, I find that very ironic. Willie Mays. But in the end, Joe knows his dad's spirit is felt in every one of the thousands and thousands of pictures he did take turning a hobby into an historical record of Pittsburgh and its sports teams. To me, it's priceless. It's invaluable. He was involved in everything, and it brings back a lot of memories. I think he'd have made a good professional photographer. Mm -hmm.